Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to my own The Shoulders of Giants YouTube channel. Uh, I am Joseph Ward, the founder and creator of On the Shoulders of Giants, also the author of the On the Shoulders of Giants book series. Uh, On the Shoulders of Giants volumes one, two, and three. Volume one covers Sung and Unsung Heroes from North America. Volume two covers Sung and Unsung Heroes from Central America. And volume three is South America. And I got volume four coming soon, so I'm about to start working on volume four now. Um, thank y'all, man. Come on. Make sure y'all like this video. You share this video. You subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell, too, after you subscribe to this channel, because I have a lot of great information uh, for you. And remember, On the Souls of Giants gives you African history at your fingertips, the stories of the sung and unsung heroes of the African diaspora. Um, definitely visit my website to learn more about me. You see it right here, www.ontheshoulders1.com. That's my home. That's my home base. Uh, I know I use YouTube, but this is my home base. Please visit my, my website. Visit the website. You can actually sign up for my email list. I have an email list where I send out information to people. Keep them updated on everything that's going on with On the Shows of Giants so you never miss out. And there's some of the treats and stuff there for all of my people on my email list. Um, you can also become a patron of On the Shoulders of Giants by right here, patreon.com backslash O-T-S-O-G. Um, you can sign up for my online course. You can support On the Shoulders of Giants. And when you become a patron at the different levels, at the different tiers, you know, there's a gift in there for you. There's something special in there for you. So make sure y'all check me out. Uh, once again, on the shoulders onecom is the website and patreon.com backslash O-T-S-O-G. Um, I want to I want to give a shout out to all my subscribers. Thank you all for subscribing to this channel. Um, I appreciate you allowing this channel to grow. We we creeping up on eight thousand subscribers, so I need y'all to go ahead and help me. Actually, let's go ahead and get past eight. Let's get to ten thousand. So, and y'all mm -hmm. subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Go ahead and hit that button, hit that notification bell, so every time I drop something, you'll be in the know. But if you really, really, really want to be in the know, become a patron or join that email list, and I got you. We we putting it in. So, um, as you know, lately I've been coming at you with a with a couple of interviews in the chats. I started off with Dr. Jerry C about the Lado Road. Um, myself and Baba Olu Segun gave y'all two parts of the Kuji Chagu Lia mentality. Uh, my homie Delacia Hollinger came through and we talked about the importance of pres the preservation of African-American history. Now, today I got a brother that uh, he, I would say he'd been, there from the, he'd been there from the jump, from the beginning. When I was, when I was eight years old, um, Mr. Keith Turner, he started a drill team in Tallahassee, Florida, and that was one of the first things that I was part of that. I, I believe it really kept me out the streets. It kept me from getting in drugs and gangs and things, but uh, we kept in touch over the years and kind of found out he's an avid historian like myself. So I want to bring him on so we can have a little chat about history, and we're talking about the word, um, uh, storytelling, and the jelly or the griot and the, and the jelly is D J E L I. That's the real word uh, of the African word. And the griot is the French word. You know, the right. French came in that colonized Africa. So that's what we're getting into the importance of the word storytelling and the griot. He's the founder of Jewels for the Mind, Mr. Keith Turner. Man, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Doing great. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming up here and chopping it up with me. I'm glad to be here. We yes, talk. All, we talk all the time about all kind of stuff. I know. So it, 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 it just feel like home, actually. Exactly. I was like, man, it's you know, we're not gonna go too too far in like we do because we do a lot of strategic uh, talking, but yeah. we do want to make sure that we can we can go in depth enough to give uh, people a good overview of the power of the word, the power of storytelling, and why griots or, or jellies were very, very, very important in African history. But before we jump into that, man, can you give the people a little information about Jewels for the Mind? Because you do a lot. So go ahead and let them know what you got going on so they can um, hit you up and support you. Well, Jewels for the Mind is is a, uh, the, the word in itself, Jewels for the Mind. Jewels meaning knowledge or, or, or light or words of wisdom. Right. It, it, it encompasses a lot of things. It, 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 uh, words of wisdom, uh, conscious lyrics, history. So basically, I won't go into what all the Jews mean. I'm just giving you an idea 
and it's for the mind. So I wanted to come up with something that was catchy, and I and that's pretty to the point, and it's easy to understand. That's Jules, J-E-W-E-L-S, the number four, the letter D, mind. So just to put that little catch on there, right. you know, we're in this instant grit age, and everything is 160 characters, so I, that fits right on with mm-hmm. Jules, the number four, and the letter D, Jules for the mind. So, that, and, all right, and, yeah, and um, I'll just say he he helps people get their books published. So definitely, he's helped me publish all three of my books. So because people are always asking how you got your book published, how you got your book published, this is him. This is how I get mm-hmm. my book published. He's helped me get my book published. He's a photographer. Mm-hmm. Uh, he do a lot of things, man. Y'all make sure yeah. y'all hit him up. Yeah. So but I want to go ahead and say this. We're going to say it at the end, but what's the best way for people to contact you? The best way to contact me is is uh, through Instagram and my DM. Uh, where I spend a good bit of time is on my sports, my sports uh, Instagram. I have a few of them, actually. But the one that I'll probably answer because that's where I'm, you know, I do a lot of sports stuff is uh, Jewel for the Mind Sports Media. Or even right. uh, Fam You Photo Memoirs. And that's on Instagram, right? Yeah, both of those on Instagram. And as far as, you know, writers, Jewel for the Mind Writer's Life and Jewel for the Mind Journalism. Those are my four Instagram pages. The reason I did that was because. I want to, when I put information out, I want it to be right for the niche that I'm speaking to. And I mm-hmm. think that, that pretty much does it. I do a lot of journalism. I'm always dealing with writing. So I want to keep it in those lanes. And I'll say those again. Right. Jewish for the mind, writer's life. Jewish for the mind, journalism. Jewish for the mind, sports media. And family photo memoirs. And one that'll cover pretty much any subject is just Jewish for the mind. That one is not so niche right. specific, but uh, those are the five right there. All right, cool, mm-hmm. and I appreciate that. So, man, y'all make sure y'all check them out, follow them, support them. That's what we do here. Yeah. So, um, let's start with the we, like I say, the word storytelling in the griot. So, um Kind of, can you kind of give like the background information and the history of the Grio and how they kind of came about and kind of all what they bring to the table? Well, a Grio or the French term or the jelly, it's it's a number one. It's a a, a, a Grio, the French term. But I'm, we got to get away from that. The jelly. Yeah, the, the jelly. Actual, the right. job or the uh, it's it's a storyteller. But the jelly is a is a storyteller, mm-hmm. and that's very significant because before we even go to school, before we even learn anything, we're learning stories uh, through stories, right. through poems, through proverbs, and so the jelly tells stories. They're not just a storyteller; they're poets. They act out things, act out stories, they act out events in history. So it's very important. And also entertainer because uh, you no know, entertainer, right. you know, you can't keep somebody attention if if it's boring. So, you know, there's no telling what a jelly will do. Just like a good teacher, right. or a good preacher, uh, you have to be entertaining or you won't get the message over. Right, right. And I know I first became uh, familiar with jellies when I read uh, the book about Sunday Yada. Yes. Um, and Bella Fonseca, I, I hope I'm saying it right. I'm probably saying it wrong, but Bella mm-hmm. Fonseca was the was the jelly for for Sunday Yada. And yes. now, what was interesting? What's interesting? And um, see if you can go more into that is the relationship between because a lot of jellies are paired with kings. Yeah. And but they grow but they grow up together, and that's how what I learned when I was uh, reading the book about Sunday Yada is mm-hmm. Bella Fonseca and and Sunday Yada like they literally came up together so why um help us understand why they usually uh pair the jelly with the with the king early in life because the king the king it's like generational you know uh, uh, the jelly or historian or wordsmith that goes back thousands of years you know Mm -hmm. actually millions of years and so that that particular uh prince he has a a, a, a the jelly 
or, or that comes up with them, or maybe a little older. I won't say they necessarily might be the same age. Like, just say if they was eight, that the jelly might be right. 12. Yeah, but that right. the jelly, his father, or his, and his, you know, the jelly, they could be a man or woman. They, they train to be a wordsmith of the jelly. So, and mm-hmm. their father and their grandfather and their great grandmother, it's, it's like a, a family. You know, it's a family of historians. And so, right. And just like that, Prince had a Dejele that trained and came up with him and taught him about his who he is, his family's history. That same thing happened to the father and the grandfather with that same line or that same family of Dejeles. So they have it's right. like a kinship. They have a bond together. Their families are tied together for millions of years. And that's that's okay. where that pretty much works. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um so how like Jele and Grio. So at what point did the French come in to be able to kind of look at that culture and take from it and not even take from it, but just give a French word to the name Jele? Like how did do you know around the time when that happened? Well, when we're talking about the French, it had to be in the last uh, three or four hundred years because they, mm-hmm. uh, they're really new to the history of African people. African people are the oldest people in the world. You right. Look that up from Lewis Leakey to um, Basil Davidson to Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, they'll tell you that. And anthropology, the peak, uh, you know, the, you can just look in anthropology books. But uh, right. it, 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 had, it happened within, a, within the last three, four hundred years because before that, you know, wonder about it, thinking about what was going on in Europe too much uh, because African people had their own thing going on. You know, trades, universities, doing all kind of surgery, engineering and all this kind of stuff. So really a lot of um, Europeans came to Africa to learn. And and, mm-hmm. and when they say explore, they come to find and uh, use a lot of the material and the raw goods to help build up their continent. Right, right. Yeah, they they definitely. I know the uh, the last one I had with uh, Baba Ola Segun, we, we got into a bit about the the annexation of Africa when the European nations came in. Because you know we talked. Well, I mentioned uh, Walter Rodney's book, uh, How yeah. Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the greatest things about the Jele and the whole thing that we're talking about is, you know, we were when we was discussing how we was going to do this, we got excited talking about our our historians. Yeah. And like Dr. John Henry Clark is one of my favorite. Um J. A. Rogers, um Schomburg is one of my favorite, Dr. Ben. So we're gonna yeah. get into these historians yeah. as well. But before we get into them, the word and storytelling. So give us the power and importance of the word and storytelling. The power, the power of storytelling is it's a powerful it's a powerful learning institution um mm-hmm. there's no i mean you can look at hip hop music uh, the blues uh all types of music around the world is stories being told with a beat and so right uh like like I mentioned earlier before we even go to school, we're learning songs and and, and riddles and parables and uh, uh so that's the power in itself it's inspirational. It's uh right. It's, it's educational, and it hypes you up. If you're down, it, it gets you from being depressed. So it's a lot of things that makes uh the word powerful. Because you know, even in mm-hmm. the Bible, saying the beginning was the word. So yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and you could and look at, you look at you look at the culture. You look at all around the world. You see hip hop. Which is storytelling with a tight yeah. beat. So that in itself, yeah, and then you had before that you had the blues, and before that you, you know it's R and B. All yeah. of this is storytelling. The Negro spirituals too. Yeah, because those like the foundation, some of the foundation of some of these stories and things that that are told. But you're right, like this storytelling is everywhere. Um, I ain't gonna lie, I don't even really respect rappers who can't tell stories. Right. Cause you know, like using that power of the word and being able to tell those stories and kind of bring people into it. Cause when I say that, I think about um, 
the first time I heard Nas's New York State of Mind. Even though it's not a full story, but it, it gives you the aspects. I closed my eyes and I kind of felt like I was in New York with him. Mm -hmm. And at that time, never had been in New York. So I'm just going off of things that he said and the things that I've seen on TV, but I was able mm -hmm. to put pictures into my mind. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, no, I actually That's what's um, up. I have a poem that I, I wrote that, that okay. a couple more than I could probably say and probably more precise, but in an artistic way. Um, okay. I don't necessarily, but I'll, I'll read it. Okay. The name of it is uh, Music in Our Souls. Okay. Why is music so important to black people? We are music and music is us. We are creative and talented from our soul, our essence, our core. What we Africans gave to the world is unlike no other in the world. No matter what, our music has transcended time. From the glorious kingdoms of Africa to the waters of the Atlantic Ocean or the Indian Ocean, we were carried to foreign lands of slavery. Our music has survived. The music has survived past the slave master whip, the cotton field, the tobacco field, the sugar cane fields. Our music has survived. Our music was and is our solid foundation to lean on in troubled times. Our music and God was our mother and father when we were motherless and fatherless in a foreign land. Our beloved music soothed us to sleep when the nights were long and lonely. Our music stroked the fires of revolt and our souls to stand up and fight for freedom. The music of Africa pounded away, reminding us that we can keep on going. Reminding us that we are who we are. Reminding us Africa was our native land. The music kept the beauty of Africa in our minds, hearts, and souls. The music was our counselor when everything seemed like there was no direction. From the music, we stood up and braced ourselves and shook the dust of cruelty and all the evils of mankind and got in beat with the music of Mother Africa and made our own music. Oh, dear Mother Africa, we're your children. From you, we're inspired to keep your music, your story. Our story, pining away with the rhythms and lessons, your gifts. Even though we're a long ways from you, your story, your heart, soul, and mind lives in us. We live in your rhythms through the blues, jazz, soul, R&B, hip-hop, reggae, gospel, house music, ballads, bass. We're giving you, we're giving to the world what you gave us. Your fire, your desire, your love is forever in us, Mother Africa. Now that particular piece there, and um, to speak on what you was what we was talking about earlier about the trailer hip hop from Mother Africa, um, mm -hmm. you know this this particular poem is called the trailer hip hop from Mother Africa, and the reason I'm reading these poems or, or saying these poems because I could cover a lot of ground in a short space of time. So, um, right, this particular piece here is called the trailer hip hop from Mother Africa. Mm -hmm. the, the jelly, the slave master tried to take out, but fist their smug street. Uh, upstream, no call trap. That joker don't know what it be about. We children of the sun, wind winners on the bun, break dance, fist the tabletop, him a beatbox, street ball, we still standing tall. Caveman came to Africa because he was on the crawl. He needed the light of Africa so he could stand tall. Ice, now that's void of life. That's how that joker got in all kind of ice, but now we rolling dice on concrete jungles. Every day hard as a baseball bat, but caveman, he calls that. Where do we go from here, black folk? Now, don't you fear. The ancestor said, from the bottom, we coming up. They words don't slip. We the ones got to get hip. Drop that joint and the sip. And let that common sense rip. Lock hands now on that freedom trip. Now, these yeah. poems were totally metaphors, but metaphors are symbolic. So we see those, you right. know, it's visual. And it covers, right. what I just read covers history. It covers uh, what happened, uh, the great things will happen to us, the bad things that happen to us those are stories but they're told and each one of those was no longer than two or three minutes but it covers mm -hmm. centuries it's, right. it covers centuries and that's the power of a jelly or a wordsmith or a historian they tell a lot of information in a short period of time and it even gets deeper when you drop a beat in there a, a, a djembe right. or a conga drum or, or even just beating on the tabletop you know, like in the classroom, we have um, the kids spit and have a uh, rap contest in the classrooms, mm -hmm. in the hallway. We can make a beat with the beatbox. And then you spitting on top of that, that's worldwide. And we ain't right. into this. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Black folk been using the word for the longest. Like one of my favorite things that I learned is how Negro spirituals were actually used as um used to give messages and used to give information yeah. so 
uh, weight in the water don't mean what weight in the water really means. Okay. And so if we if we're singing if like and I I'm not gonna sit here and mess up no <laughs> spiritual or whatever. So yeah. I ain't gonna go like specific. But mm -hmm. let's say if they if they singing a song about somebody crossing the river, or getting somewhere like they actually giving information and things. And then um, if you want to mix in the creativity and the art with it is when they have the the um, the maps braided into the young lady's head. Oh, yeah. So you got a full map braided into her head, mm -hmm. as well as you got these songs that they're singing. Yeah. And remember, um, the the drums and things were banned. The drums and the singing were banned because they were they the slave masters found out that they were using those for for communication. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that word is definitely definitely very very powerful. So yeah. so let's get to some of these historians though, man. Okay. Because these are our modern day gelés, right? Mm -hmm. um, so as for, when it comes to historians, who are some of the ones that influenced you? Well, the, f the first starting off, and I wouldn't say necessarily like um, historian, but I could tell you the first book, uh, the, actually the second book that I ever read, it, and, and, and I'm almost ashamed to say it, at 19 years old, was um, the autobiography of Malcolm X. And mm -hmm. so to answer your question, what was the first historian? I would have to say in my case, Malcolm, because... Right. I don't think I had ever read a whole book, maybe one, until I was like a sophomore at FAMU. Right. And, and uh, I wasn't doing well in school. I had a one seven grade point average about to get kicked out. But once I started reading Malcolm X, I had never heard anybody with so much knowledge. And he, he mentioned a lot of books that he read when he was in prison. And here I am had never read a book and it was hard for me getting through reading Malcolm X's book because I want I went to the library and started tracing and getting the books that he was talking about J A Rogers um you know great men of color 1 and 2 uh uh Africa's gift to America those J A Rogers books and some uh other other historians that he was talking about so in other words Malcolm had the plug in other words he he turned me on to a lot of people I wind up getting those books, going to the bookstore, buying J.A. Rogers, Great Men of Color, Volume 1 and 2, um, Africa's Gift to America. Yeah. And then I started reading some of the other books. And I also was still reading Malcolm book when he was talking about things that went on in the world, things that was going on with, with black people and things like that, and just history, period. And right. I, I came to, I started, I, I quit sitting in the back of the class. I was able to come to the front of the class and start having a voice. And, mm -hmm. and um, so I realized that I didn't know that much, even though I had graduated from high school. Right. In my in my mind, I mean, I had knowledge. I, you know, came out of high school like a two seven, but I'm saying knowledge that I could, that relevant knowledge, knowledge that inspired me, knowledge that meant something. That's what I'm getting at. Right. And before I know right. it, I'm going to the library, I'm reading two or three books a week. And my grades within two semesters, I was already made. I started making honor roll. I made a three two, three two five, two semesters later from a one seven. So that's the power right. of reading. I mean, it gives you wings, and that's the power of history. So uh, once I read about Malcolm, and then a friend gave mm -hmm. me Dr. John Henry Clark, and then I um, I came across a Dr. Ben. And then as yeah. they talk about other, so those Malcolm, Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, and then I started reading, reading um, Walter Rodney, uh, uh, Dr. W.B. Du Bois, Dr. Carter G. Wilson, another powerful book, uh, Miseducation of Negro. So those are mm -hmm. the those are the main ones right there. But as time went on, I started reading other historians, you know, white and black. It doesn't matter what type of historian, as long as they're telling the truth, I gravitated toward that. Right. Well, well, Dr. Clark, Dr. John Henry Clark did tell us to read everything. Yeah. Even even yeah. like the information that the white supremacists put out, read everything, because you want to you want to be able to get a full view of what this thing really is. And um, 
Cause my 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 uh journey is similar to yours. I um Sunday Sunday Yada isn't the first full book that I read. Mm-hmm. Um I used to say that but when I went back and thought about it. Um Sunday Yada was the first book that I read that I really enjoyed. And, I, and the first book that I completed yeah. that I really enjoyed. And I was like in college, right? Mm-hmm. And when I got into the to the history, because when I got to FAMU, I got into the psychology program. And uh the Miseducation of the Negro was a book that we had to read. Uh, I took a psychology class and he was just he was adamant about us reading that book. And we got into the reading that book, get got into the psychological aspects of what conditioning and racism has done to black people. But then like yourself, I when I when I got on to um to Dr. Clark, I got on to Dr. Ben, J. A. Rogers, then you you put me on um from Superman to Man. Oh from yeah, J. A. Rogers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, cause, cause I already had uh, Great Men of Color Volume One, and then I know I got Great Men of Color Volume Two from you, and and um, just for the for the listening audience, uh, we trade a lot of information, we trade a lot of books, but Keith has put me on a lot of books, um, from the historians. So, um, go ahead. Oh no, I'm 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 listening. Uh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So. Like, who was one of the first, or let's let's go, let's delve deep into these historians and kind of mm-hmm. get into their importance. So, like you mentioned Dr. Clark. So for those who don't know Dr. John Henry Clark, kind of explain to him who he is. Dr. John Henry Clark is a, a world-renowned historian, uh, an educator, an author, a writer, a poet. He was um, born in... Uh, and down here in Georgia, I think over in Columbus, uh, it, or at least in the area, I know it in Columbus. But Dr. Clark was pretty much just like a lot of us. You know, he knew it, was, it wasn't something that going as far as our history. He just knew it had to be something different. And um, I remember specifically uh, he read a small book, called The Negro Digs Up His Past by Arthur Schomburg. And Arthur Schomburg is a Right, a powerful historian and educator and everything else. Yeah, well, I'll get into that a, a little bit. But he read that little small right. book when he was about fourteen or fifteen years old, and before that, you know, he was constantly asking his grandmother and uh, trying to find his uh, history any way he could in, in the Sunday school. You know, he would ask his mother, grandmother questions about, um, you know, why we're in the condition we're in, it, uh, you know. And she didn't really want to listen to it. You know, she was just like, you just go by everything and go by what I tell you. Yeah. You're asking all them questions. So he started researching and digging on his own. And he came across this book by Arthur Schomburg, like I said again, called The Negro Digs Up His Past. It wasn't a big book, maybe less than 50 pages. But the, the mm-hmm. great thing about a, 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 a the jelly or a wordsmith, they can cover a lot of ground. They don't have to have four or 500 pages. You know, just like a, a great song, a songwriter, they could cover ground in two minutes that a person that's not saying that would uh, take 10 minutes and still don't say that. So he read this book, right? And it so inspired him that he left to go to New York to try to meet uh Dr. Schomburg. And uh, he rode Hobo, he caught the train, you know, didn't have no money to get there. He caught the train and he wanted to go to New York because he heard that. Uh, Arthur Schomburg was a uh, a curator uh, over over a collection in yeah. New York. Well, actually, Dr. Schomburg had sold his collection and made some money on that, but yeah, he, he had did. so much material that even though they, he sold his collection, they had to hire him right back because they didn't even know how to organize yeah. it. They couldn't find the information. So who better to right. come and, and basically ask him what he'd be over his own material but it wasn't his material anymore he sold it but now he's back right. in the library now uh basically helping people out look for information that they were looking for researchers and things like that and so mind now i told you dr clark he left to come there probably only had two or three dollars in his pocket if that but he wanted to go meet this the jelly he went to go meet him and Mm-hmm. So that's how he wound up in New York. He wanted to go, and so he wanted uh, Arthur Schomburg to tell him the history of black people in less than 
like the shortest time possible. And he was just like, sit down, <laughs> yeah. son. I can't tell you the history, all history in, in five or ten minutes. Right. So basically he became like a like a kung fu master training a um a a a a, a a person yeah. that's coming, he became like, his mentor. Yeah, in in, in, right. in this craft of knowledge and and, and learning. So that was a powerful right. thing there. Um, that was a very powerful thing. And so John, yeah, Henry um, Clark, John Henry Clark went on to be a world known historian and author. Yeah, and he had a lot of yeah. great mentors. Um, Williston Huggins of the Harlem History Club. Uh, uh, um, a lot of people. George C. Cipher. I mean, it's just a lot of people. He hooked up and met Dr. Ben, and they became friends. Yeah. They've been friends probably since the 1940s or 30s, maybe somewhere around mm-hmm. that time. And those two right there, <laughs> sometimes they would even Powerful. get lectures together. They would, you know, sometimes they would get lectures at the church. They'll get lectures on the corner. It don't matter. They're going to hook up, and they're going to drop some jewels. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be in there five hours with them, too. Oh, but yeah. that, that's, but it's nobody, worth it. Nobody, it's worth it, nobody, though. Yeah, but nobody... Nobody was ready to go when they come see Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben. They right. don't stay there. If they five hours, if they speak in five hours, nobody leaving. Right, right. And what's interesting about Dr. Clark is like we're calling him Dr. John Henry Clark. But if we're talking formal education, yeah. he don't go past the ninth grade. Yeah. So we're talking about somebody who is literally self-educated because, you know, like you were saying with Dr. Clark, it started with him not seeing any images, uh, black images in the Bible and starting early and asking, well, where are the black people in the Bible? And nobody could answer those questions. Yeah. And then, like I said, when he found uh, Arthur Schomburg's book, that that really fed his curiosity even more because he's like, OK, so there is information out here about black people. Well, how can I get more of this? And he traveled from the south to New York. Man, this States. man left that home. Was cool. He left home and he left home. Didn't have no money to catch no train. He rode on the, uh, what is that is, the uh, cargo train. You know, where they put material right. in. It's not like a passenger train. You know how long and aggravating right. that probably was? But he had this in mind. He wanted I know. to get this uh, another level of knowledge. It, it made him put right. on his traveling shoes. Yeah. From, yeah. from Georgia all the way that. to New York. <laughs> On the train, cause I yeah. I've I've taken the Greyhound from Florida to New York. But that took twenty seven hours, so I know like mm-hmm. back in the day that was a long. That yeah. probably took a couple of days. Yeah, that, yeah, that train probably only yeah. moving 30, 30 miles an hour, thirty forty. Miles. Yeah, just a little faster than walking. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little light trot right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So so um. So we talked about Dr. Clark. Let's go more into Dr. Ben a bit because um, more another Jele. Because when I think about Dr. Ben, are you familiar like with this situation that happened with Nick Cannon and Viacom and him uh, trying to talk about the history of Judaism and things? Yeah, I'm familiar with it, but probably um, not in depth or anything like that. But I'm familiar. Okay, with it. well, because now we don't, it don't you don't have to go in depth, but you know Nick Cannon pretty much got in trouble for yeah. Um, for speaking truth, talking about um, the history of Judaism and how it yeah. started in Africa. Yeah. But what I love about Dr. Ben is Dr. Ben is a Falasha Jew. Yeah. He's he's from Ethiopia. Um, and um, I can't remember all of his all of his uh, roots. I think it's one of his parents are Cuban or something like that. But um, Dr. Dr. Ben actually wrote extensively on the history of Judaism. He wrote extensively on Nile Valley situ- uh, civilizations and talking yeah. about the origins, how the original Jews were black people yeah. um, and how. Um, but all religions well, the original, everybody were black people because all religions and things come out of Africa along that Nile Valley. So um, how familiar are you with like Dr. Ben's writings and his um his historical covering, not just of Jews, but just some of the um, other things that come out of the Nile Valley. Well, I'm familiar with Dr. Ben. He wrote a lot of books. Dr. Ben was also a photographer and all those drawings that you see in Dr. Ben. Yeah, he was an architect, too. Yeah, Yeah. architect and engineer, but he he drew those drawings in those uh, books as well. And he published all of his own books. He printed them out, published them, and took them to the bookstores. 
A lot of people don't know that. Dr. Ben, you know, he, he put his own books out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but Dr. Ben was another world historian, very knowledgeable, but not just on African history, but even European history. Because in some of their, in right. some of his lectures, he break down, you know, all kind of history, European history, right. African history. So, you know, the, uh, the historian, uh, they're not just uh, knowledgeable on just any one particular thing, but of course they're going to be on our, our African people. But to tell the story and tell it full, you have to know other histories as well. And that's what mm -hmm. made them, you know, what we call uh, legends. Or like they say, the right. greatest of all times. They, they, they were great teachers and inspirators. And, and that's Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark. It just I don't even have enough words to say about them. As far as, as, far as right. you know. But they have a lot of lectures. They have a lot of um, books. And you, you're not going to be short of finding information on them and their material. Right. Then you have a chance to, I know you say you had a chance to hear Dr. Clark speak in person, but who oh, all, yeah. like yeah. what were some some of the historians that you had a chance to listen to speak in person and like oh, what was the experience like? Oh, no, I've, 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 um, I've seen Dr. Clark speak numerous times, especially here in Atlanta. Okay. Matter of fact, um, I've met Dr. Clark personally and Every time you come through Atlanta, or when, or when I was staying at Tallahassee when he come there, I would go to all of his, mm -hmm. all of his all of his uh, speeches and his book signs and everything else. And uh, right. Dr. Ben, when he come through Atlanta, I would go there. So I, uh, Dr. Ivan Van Cernema, uh, uh Leonard Jeffries, I always try to make it a goal that if if they're in town or if they even went in a if they're not in town, I would travel to go, you know, because that's the thing about knowledge. You can't just stay in one place. You got to go after knowledge and you have to mm. seek knowledge. So if they anywhere in the area or if they, you know, I got the time, I'm going to go. And if I don't have the time, right. I'm going to go. You know, I try to make time to go. But, yeah, I've, I've, I've uh, seen Dr. Clark speak numerous times, but mainly when he when he's here, coming down here to Atlanta or in Tallahassee or down in the south because – Dr. Clark would give so many lectures a year. Like, he would come to Atlanta, right? And he would speak at the, two or three of the bookstores and then do book signing. But then he'll go out to the junior college and speak out there. So when he come, he's not going to be here one day. He's going he gonna to speak. Right. He's going to go at the bookstore. He's going to do, like, two or three lectures in one day. Like, say if he come on a right. Thursday, he's going to speak. Two o'clock book signing, four o'clock he's speaking. You know, uh, five o'clock, and then at night he be, might be speaking at in the cab college. You know, so right. guess what? On that Thursday, I'm seeing him speak three times at the bookstore. Uh, he might speak another place, and then he might be at uh, the AU Center. So, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm I'm trying to catch every one of them, and then he do the same thing right. on Saturday. And then uh, Sunday he might be he gonna be at Georgia Tech, and he gonna be speaking somewhere. So within a three day period, Dr. Clark might have spoke at least seven times, and I'm in all seven places. That's you what's know? up. And and so, uh, and he dropping knowledge. He's speaking two or three hours on on and making you feel good, telling stories, have you laughing. You are talking about a comedian, Dr. Clark? Like you, he he always say. A good educator or a good inspiring person, they also have to be able to know how to get the, the subject across. And you can't get it across being right. boring. So, I mean, he had a lot of memorable right. sayings. And it's going to stick in your mind. You know, stuff I read or heard Dr. Clark say when I was 19, I remember over 20, 30 years later. Right. And the same thing with Dr. Right. Ben. You know, Dr. Ben would come and, and get lectures down here in Atlanta. Um and I would try to get his tapes. You know, I would get his tapes and, and listen to his tapes as well. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Ah, man, that's cool. That's that's. I'm, I'm jealous. I ain't even gonna lie, because <laughs> you got to sit at the feet of the masters, man. Um, I know a couple of the professors that I I had at FAMU. They would tell some of the stories about them being able to listen to Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, Francis, Chris Wilson, um, Ivan Van Sertima. Um, and I, you I know, actually, I'm not actually, gonna lie. 
Actually, in the nineties, man, in the nineties, at FAMU, all of them used to come to there. Mm-hmm. Dr. Francis, Chris Wilson, uh, Sonia Sanchez, yeah. Dr. Ben, Dr. Leonard Jeffrey. I know, like in in ninety three and ninety four, ninety five, all of them would come there, and they would be right there in, um, mm-hmm. you know, in Lee Hall or Charles Winterwood, or even Dr. Clark even uh, spoke at one of the graduations as well. So I mean, yeah. the commencement days. So, but uh. That's what's up. <laughs> it's funny because you'll see a lot of the, some of the professors, they be up. Boy, Dr. Clark, he wasn't going to hold it back, man, you know, because he know how to be <laughs> kept for him. And so, you know, the professors, uh, 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 they're going to have to sit on their hands or they maybe have to just leave because Dr. Clark going to drop some jewels, boy, for real. Because he know right, he might not right. be speaking for a while, but he got all these students here in this in, the, in Gaither Gym. He letting it rip. I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah. And, I don't and, blame and, and him, man. But, too, man. Yeah. Now, it's real cool, though. Like, you had those experiences because, um, for one, you were able to give some of that information to me. And, you know, I am able to chop some of that up and put it into On the Shows of Giants. Cause, mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't know, On the Shows of Giants actually came out of a conversation with you. Because... Um, you know, I came home frustrated that that one day. It was like what 2012. Uh, I came home frustrated because I was doing the class and none of the young girls knew who Harry Tubman was. You know, Harry Tubman like one of my favorite historical figures. Yeah. And you know, I was talking to you, and you was like, "Man, well, what you gonna do about it?" But then you you didn't just ask me that. Just leave it out that we started having the conversation, start constructing things, and it ended up becoming this platform on the shows of Giants, where I, where I'm telling these stories because I'm like, well. If they don't know who Harry Tubman is, I know they don't know who a lot of these other people. Yeah. And like, like, like we talking Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, Ivan Van Sertima, J. A. Rogers. I know they don't know who these people is. So I was yeah. like, all right, well, I want to make sure this platform is used so they can know who our historians is and know who our heroes are. So yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah man. So um, J. A. Rogers. So. At, and I'm trying to, was J.A. Rogers, I know he was before Dr. Clark, but was he before Dr., uh, Sean Bird? No, they were about the same. About the, they, as a matter of fact, they were friends. They they knew each other. They were aware okay. of each other, uh, right, and stuff like that. So um, J.A. Rogers, Dr. Sean Bird, all of them wound up being mentors of Dr. Clark when he came up to New York. Cause, uh, I mean, um, you know, like I say, he met a lot of a lot of mentors that basically taught him how the, the jellies were taught way back in the day, you know, taught them. He sat at their feet and learned, you know, so. Right. Um, yeah, but J.A. Rogers, they, they go again, you know, your J.A. Rogers, your Dr. Ben, your Dr. Clark, a lot of them, weren't nobody really trying to publish their books, even though they was putting out truth. J.A. Rogers, I don't think he ever went through a major publish. J.A. put his own books out like Dr. Ben. Right. Yeah. Right. So and he put and out so, a lot of books. Right. So how did you how did you become aware of J. A. Rogers? By reading Malcolm X, uh, uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X. He was when he was talking okay. about the books that he was reading while he was in prison, and he would he list all these books out like J. A. Rogers, and he would give little summaries. He get he gives summaries of some of the books that he was reading. And I was just like, man, I got to mm-hmm. check that book out. So here I am. I haven't even read right. one, you know, maybe one book. And here I am, 19 years old. And so I said, well, if, if these books got Malcolm with this much knowledge, and he's dropping all kind of stuff, well, I want to go read them books too. I want to be smart because I'm tired of being <laughs> dumb. You know, I mean, not right. dumb, to right. the fact of, to, dumb to the knowledge of myself, dumb to our history, dumb to, you know, the great things that we've done in the world. So that's what I that's what I mean by dumb. Uh right. Dumb to the real history of the world. Actually. You know, here I am graduated from high school and I didn't even know half of what I probably even a quarter of nothing. You right. Know, you, say, you know, and that's just the truth. So, right, right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember how I really came across J.A. Rogers. I think I think I was scrolling through Amazon uh, in one bookstore and mm-hmm. I saw the book um the hundred uh black hundred men of color and I yeah. was like 
this is pretty interesting. This is a, it's a nice size book. And I was kind of, I think I was either flipping through it or, or looking at some of the context and I saw all the historical figures. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, dang. Like, <clears throat> and it's, it's like laid out, it was hundreds of people. So I know I definitely grabbed that book. Um, mm -hmm. And it that book has been a help because uh, like now, <laughs> On my YouTube channel, like right now, um, somebody just left a comment today trying to argue with me about the ethnicity of Hannibal. Uh, I've had a lot of, especially non-black people, come on here try to uh, argue with me about the ethnicity of Hannibal. And but and um, you know what I'm what I'm getting across to people is I'm not just pulling stuff out my butt. Like I ain't just pulling nothing. Out, out. I'm I'm giving you information that our scholars have um, have given you, but I'm also making sure I research that research. And so. Yeah. It's funny that you got scholars who spent 40 and 50 years like really doing in the research. Then you got fly by night people who come through and act like they are the um, the the authors or the authoritarians on the history on the history and everything. So it's kind of yeah. funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then um, now now with J.A. Rogers, though, um, I love the 100 uh, Men of Color book. But that Superman, the man from yeah. Superman, the man. Yeah. That. That was that's one of the best books I've read so far. Yeah, now uh, like, another powerful book by J. A. Rogers. Um, everybody listening to this, I hope you write this down. Um, Africa's Gift to America. Africa's Gift to America. Africa. I don't know if you've ever read that, Joe, but that's that's one of the books right there. Um, you're gonna know American history inside out, but it's gonna be all the missing pages, and so uh, he fills the gap of all the stuff that was left out. And makes it more of a complete story and it's gonna make sense. And when somebody goes talking about American history, you're gonna be able to rock with whatever they're talking about. Uh Africa's gift to America. J. A. Rogers. It's a hard, a okay, hard I'm looking, I'm, about it. I'm yeah. looking at it right now. Yeah. Africa's gift to America. Okay. Um okay. but another yeah, book like that, a, another book yeah. that caught my eye, it was just a little small book. He put out, it didn't have no fancy graphics or nothing like that. It was just like a little 50 or 60 page book. Um, um 100 Amazing Facts about the Negro. I might be off a little bit, but it's just a white paper. Yeah, book. I got that book. A little I got small that. book with the print, probably like a 10 or 11. Right. That book is powerful. Uh, is that name? Yeah, right? it is. I know it's something like it. It's just a white book with black writing, 100 Amazing Facts about yeah. the Negro or something like that. Yeah, uh, and it's a it's a uh, I can't think of the name of it. It's another one he got. It's kind of it's kind of constructed like a comic book. Another book that J. A. Rogers had that I have. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't think of the name of it right now. But mm -hmm. uh, I just I just tell everybody like these these histor these these historians or Jaylees that we're talking about write these names down. Yeah. Go look at these books and read these books. Read this information. Yeah. Because yeah. going, you know, making making stuff full circle. That's the importance of the of the power of the word and storytelling. Mm -hmm. Because they've used the word, they've used storytelling to teach us our history, especially us knowing that we are in a um, in a white supremacist society. And let's be real, we haven't grown up learning our histories unless you was one of those people who was in a special situation where you were around adults who were actually teaching that. But for most of us. We didn't grow up knowing our history, but and then also, not only did we not know our history, we didn't know that these historians existed. But now that yeah. we know, you've got to get that information and look yeah. at it. You got to. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, I see it now. Um, Africa's gift to America. Okay, yeah. I didn't know about this that, book. That book, man. That man, that book right there. I've read that book at least three, four times, and I can't. At one point. I used to just keep it in my book bag all the time because, I mean, matter of fact, I haven't read it about it. Uh, one thing about I, I like to do with books that are um, very impactful books, I'll try to read them at least every five years. And um, it's been about eight years since I read that book. So I, I got to go through and read that book again. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and uh, um, an, another book that popped in my mind is... Um, George G. M. James. Um, oh, stolen legacy. Yeah, stolen legacy. Oh, yeah, yeah oh, stolen yeah. legacy. George. Yeah. That's a powerful book. Like, if you haven't read Stolen Legacy, make sure you go get that book and read yeah. that book. Have that book in your toolkit, Stolen Legacy, uh, yeah. from George G. M. James. And he was at, he was he he was killed basically a little bit 
uh, months after that book was put out because uh, Stolen Legacy basically breaks down the African, the true African history and the African foundation of Greek history. Because I tell people all the time, so so you mean to tell me Pythagoras is the origin of the Pythagorean theorem, but pyramids already exist? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just Damn. that's just that's just simple. So yeah. so how did the pyramids get built without that theorem before before P Pythagoras came in? Because mm -hmm. he he stole that and took that back to and, Greece. And, and 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 you know even as far as Aristotle and Alexander the Great and all that, who was their teacher? Who was their mentor? That was Socrates. But find, checking the way Socrates went to school. Right, right. And Socrates, right. Socrates, when he came, been, he yeah. came and said to defeat the um, African scholars and, and the engineers. And right. Everything. And when he went back, they wanted to kick him out of Europe. And the only ones who really would listen to him, uh, he was even making an impact on with the youth because the adults, uh, you know, they say he's speaking of God's unknown, worlds of, uh, you know, talking about stuff of another world. Uh, well, mm -hmm. and, and he talking to all kinds, but what he was talking about was math and science. And they call that of another right. world because at that time, it, you know, they thought the earth was flat. And here he go breaking down about you know the planets and um, astronomy, studying the distance, you know, you know all kind of stuff. And so, I mean, he had they brought him up on all kind of crazy charges. Say so he corrupting the mind of the youth, all kind of stuff. And he had to defend himself in court, and he beat all them charges in court because he had someone to know that he was making the people look crazy. But uh, I mean, he was right. very humble. He came in there and he kept asking. He wanted to get in there and learn the knowledge, and you know. When he went back, that that started a whole nother knowledge level for Europe. Right. And and yeah. um, you know, you know, Aristotle, he was a student of uh, Socrates, and then um Alexander of Aristotle, you know, they once they learned some knowledge, there will be a whole group of that were sharing knowledge, but the knowledge was from the knowledge that they had gotten in uh, Africa when they teach one over there. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, and I, and what's what's interesting about that is the historian Homer, he actually, if you if you look yeah. at his information, he actually gives credit to to the Africans for their contributions. But later on, when more when white supremacy and, and European supremacy started ruling over of over the world, they started basically overlooking that. And acting like Homer, and they act like it's not written down. You know that's the funny thing too, like it's not written down. But that's why we encourage people to read, man. You got to yeah. read and like Dr. Clark said, read everything, even because a lot of people say, "Well, I don't want to read that information." It comes from the white man. Well, well, what they don't realize is Europeans have preserved a lot of the African history because, of, especially during the time that Europe really took over the world and and just start taking over African history and information. A lot of the information was preserved in Europe, and so you just have to go, you have to be a researcher and go do your research and really find the information and research the information that you research because yeah. it's it's funny how you have like I say fly by night people um, who who will read something and they they are refuting the the research of a historian who spent fifty years doing their job. So yeah. it's, it just it's funny. Yeah, going off of uh, so. what they think or what they we just don't feel right. What um it, like right emotion and the way you feel don't change what happened in the truth, you know. So right, uh, yeah. And that's what's up. Um, Ashra Quasi, you how familiar are you with Ashra Quasi? Mm, not too. Familiar. You talk about him a lot. I'm not. I got to get up on him more. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, Ashra, I I like Ashra Crazy. Um, I found him on YouTube a while ago, like back in the early, early YouTube days. And I know Ashra Crazy was trained by Dr. Ben. Okay. So I tell I tell people to make sure you look up Ashra Crazy because you can go on YouTube and see a lot of his videos because you know how Dr. Ben would take people on the Nile Valley tours? Yeah. So yeah. Ashford Crazy learned that from Dr. Ben. So he takes people on the Nile Valley tours mm -hmm. as, as well as um, Anthony T. Browder. Yeah. They're, like they're two of our. Yeah, Browder's solid. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, that, that those are two of our. Books. 
Yeah. Yeah. Browder. Yeah. Yeah. Browder files and now Valley Civilization. Those are powerhouse books. Right. 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 And so that's that got Dr. Ben written all over it because that's yeah. that's what they learned. They learned it from Dr. Ben yeah. <clears throat> to be able to study that information. They built off his his information. They went over to um, the Nile Valley. Went over. You know, take people on tours throughout the whole Nile Valley, and they're still they are literally still doing that to this day. Of course, well, probably yeah. not the same doing this COVID thing, yeah. but still to that's this right. day, you know, they they are alive and well yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, man. And um, uh, you can't we can't leave out the, the, uh, Ivan Van Cernema. Uh, no, no. Uh, Doctor Chancellor Williams. Yeah. Uh, Eric Williams. Capitalism, capitalism and slavery. Um, mm -hmm. Just Dr. Walter Rodney. It's just a lot of, yep. a lot of. We have no shortage of writers and historians. Right. Yeah. And and but once again, that's the whole power of this channel, and what we do here on the Souls of Giants. Because if people, if the people don't know, it's our job to make sure we tell them. And once again, going back to us ourselves being jellies, mm -hmm. um, you know me, me having the uh, opportunity to learn from you and um, and just expand my knowledge base, but also creating this platform and doing my research because it's funny. Like I, I'll, I'll go and I'm searching for one thing and I find five oh, other yeah. things. Yeah, and yeah. then and then so now I got to search those five other things and I find right. fifteen other things right. that kind of lead That's to the truth. Of yeah. Yeah. Yes, knowledge, like, knowledge like, is a never ending journey. You know, the day the day right. you say I'm I'm tired of learning, I don't want to learn no more, that's when you're gonna go on your decline. That's when you you know, you're going downhill from there. You know, uh, you know, knowledge should make us humble, not arrogant. If it's making us arrogant, then right. I don't know what the hell that is. Right. Mm -hmm. Now nah, I'm with you. Um that that without knowledge. Well, like Frederick Douglass said, when you have knowledge, you unfit to be a slave. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that's that's just really what it is. Like you can't you can't go around not knowing, especially in, in this world. Going around not knowing will have you behind. And you won't you won't be able to reach a lot of the goals and things that you're trying to reach because you're behind and you don't know. And a lot of us, I, I meet a lot of black people who like who would say, um, oh, I don't like black people like this, and black people ain't did this, and black people ain't did that. And I'd be like, Well, I'm a historian. We've done that plus more. Like I, I like how Bobby Hemme used to say, We we've been there, done that, and I already got the t shirt. We already, we, we've <laughs> yeah. been done that. Mm -hmm. So so it's like mm -hmm. that just our history is it's out there. It's it's important and it's out there. So read, 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 yeah. research and read and research. Yeah. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I love it. I I love this stuff, man. And I'm and I'm I'm, I'm I'd be excited, especially like all those conversations you have, because you know we'd be going like three or four hours talking, but um, yeah. just getting in depth to it. But but also I want people to understand like there's a you can find clues and strategies when it comes to history because um, over the years all the research that I've done, like for example, and I've said this before, I've seen a pattern of when especially European rulers, when they want to they want to take the king out or the ruler out or whoever the person that's in charge, they'll invite them for a sit down or invite them for a meeting. And at that meeting is actually an ambush and they've ambushed plenty of African leaders, male and female, at those specific sit downs. I don't know uh, if you read some of the stories, a lot of times um, they won't even send their head, whoever the, the, the head of state is, they won't even sit in that person. They'll send somebody in that place to kind of bamboozle them. But like if you studied the rain queens of South Africa until until recently, you didn't even know what the rain queen looked like. Yeah. So. So, yeah, yeah. man, this that history is out this. Every person that every name that we mentioned, research that person. Yeah. Every book we mentioned. Read that book. So um, let me ask you this before we wrap this up. Like, what are your, what are like a couple of your favorite books that you think people should pick up and read? Okay. It's a few of them, quite a few of them. Uh, it's a lot of them actually, but 
these are some of the ones I would say must reads. Uh, Message to the People by Marcus Garvey. Uh, Message to the Black Man by Elijah Muhammad. Malcolm X Autobiography. Uh, Miseducation of the Negro. Destruction of Black Civilization. Uh, Anthony T. Browder, Now Valley Civilizations, uh, and even his book, uh, The Browder Files. Right. Any book, okay. <laughs> Dr. Clark or Dr. Ben. I mean, it's just so many. You, you, we gotta, we gotta go talk about uh, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. You know. Yeah. Uh, the Negro in Our History. That's like a six, seven hundred page book. That book is a big book. It's powerful. It's a must read. Um, but definitely um, the miseducation of the Negro. Um, right. Dr. Francis Squares Wells and the ISIS Papers. And, you know, we're speaking on different historians, but we can't leave out uh, people in theater. And I would say um, okay, uh, Ruby D, my one good nerd, Ossie Davis, book of his speeches. Um, there's a book by uh, Conversations with August Wilson. I'm talking about theater people here, you know, so... Those are some of the ones I would say, you know, it's just like I said, it's a lot of them, but that's just some I would say you, look into. You say that you say that it it this internet did whatever you say that last the last two books or whatever you said because it kind of went out there when you were saying that. I don't man, I've forgotten. Uh, who 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 is the, who is the I, I I don't remember, man. I know that I think the last because you were talking to you're talking about the theater performance. Oh, okay, yeah, the theater people. We can't you gotta you gotta look up August Wilson. You know, he wrote a he wrote a play for every decade of the 20th century. And uh, and you know, a lot of movie stars right. and actors we see today, you know, they first started off in theater. A lot of them started off in August Wilson plays. You know, he's like the Tennessee Williams of uh, for the European. They they look up the Tennessee Williams or Shakespeare, but August Wilson is our. I won't even say he are Shakespeare because he ain't. He August Wilson. You know, I ain't even put this man in the right, car with right. Tennessee Williams. Uh, he August Wilson, and um, we would not have even hear about you know a lot of the actors from rock. You know, Charles Dutton to um, Denzel come out of the theater. A lot of, you know, um, Felicia mm -hmm. Richard, all of those actors, you know, they come out of theater. But um, Ruby D, My One Good Nerve, uh, Ossie Davis, um, uh, Amir Baraka, which back in the right. day was Leroy Jones, but Amir Baraka. These are our theater people, you know. Uh, Gil Scott Heron. Any of his books, any of his records, they're just like reading their books, but their albums, you know, Curtis Mayfield, especially his the years when he went solo after the impression mm -hmm. days, when he went solo from like Curtis 1970, all those solo albums, nothing but straight knowledge. It's just like he he's right. singing books. He's saying he's the the JLA still, but he's doing it with his instrument. And so, you know, um Stevie Wonder. So we gotta still put these people, they still the JLAs. Because you know the jelly is a what a teacher, a historian, right. a, 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 a musician, and so you know we're not just stuck to writing the books. We also, you know, like I say, in theater and and in um, music as well, and we can't right. leave out the importance of the black church. You know, right. all of those, right. a lot of those people that I was just talking about, from Marvin Gaye to um, Curtis Mayfield to Donnie Hathaway, another powerful, all of them come out the church. But right. they, doing the seventies and stuff like that, they got this. You know, a lot was going on. You know, Vietnam, uh, civil rights was just. You know, Dr. King being assassinated, Malcolm, all this kind of stuff. So not only did they at, at one point they might have been singing a love song, but at some point those songs start becoming more in tune with what was going on in the world, and it was right. really dropping the real knowledge that really wasn't being taught in schools. And really wasn't being told in the news, they were dropping them jewels in the music. Right. 
you know. Right. So so and after a while, they weren't even singing the love songs. It was the hip, the, the love songs in the seventies, especially when you talk about Gil Scott Heron, um, the Last Poets, Donny Hathaway. I mean, Donny still was doing some love songs, but a lot of his songs were pop from the ghetto right. to all these songs. So you got to look through your music. Got to look through the spoken word poets. You know, you come on up now in in this age here. Last we, poets. You know, Yo, yo, you know, we got Black Ice, um, uh, 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 just so many, when Deaf Poetry Jam come around, like in the early yeah. 90s, that yeah. sparked off a whole nother thing of spoken word it did. poetry. So, I mean, we, we very, we versatile. We got a lot of skills, right. a lot of knowledge, and that word is just not put in one box. So, like I said, right. we got to, we got to look in theater. We got to look in monologues. We have to look in um, uh, um, movies. And, 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 and still, you know, we got the Spike Lees and we got, uh, 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 who else? Just a lot of filmmakers. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going back, like you said, uh, uh, Ozzy Davis and Ruby D as far as filmmakers, Oscar, John Oscar Singleton. Machu. Yeah, Oscar, yeah, Oscar Michaud, for those who don't know, Oscar mm-hmm. Michaud, he's the first uh, black director. And he he, moved, he made a movie called Within Our Gates, which was a rebuttal to the um, to the Birth of America movie by uh, yeah. D.W. Griffin, D. Griffin, whatever the white man yeah. in it. But yeah, he made that movie. Yeah. And he's and he used to make his own movies. He would change. He, he would. He could do he could do his own editing. We talking about like in the 1915, 1910, yeah, man made yeah, his own movies. Right, yeah, he right. got a whole actor, he got a lot of actors, and they would put on the movies in different cities around the country. Man, this man, he was he was awesome. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, um, your home, your man's um Melvin Gordon, Van Gordon, Peebles. Melvin Peebles, Gordon Parks, yeah, um, Julia, Julia Dash. You know, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. The, the sister that the sister that uh, wrote for uh, Love and Basketball. Yeah, Gina Gina Prince. Uh, a Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She um, cause she just dropped a new movie. Um, ah, uh, it's on Netflix. Uh, what's the name of the new movie she just did? I can't think of it, but she just put out a new movie, new pretty good movie on Netflix. I can't think of the name of it right now. But, oh, uh, yeah, old but, guard, old guard. Yeah, the old guards. Yeah, yes, yes. So, yeah. um, but yeah, but I like I like the way you you um you're getting people to think about the jelly is it's not just you can't just put the jelly in the box. It's jelly uses the word. Yeah. They use storytelling. They use song. They use poetry. They use all the different arts because yeah. uh, uh, sometimes it's it may not even be verbal communication. It could be nonverbal communication that Jelly is using, but all these different ways of communication is being used to educate but entertain at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's yeah, we up. got we gotta we gotta look through the music, film, uh spoken word, poetry, all kind of stuff. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So um once again, man, appreciate you for coming through, Keith. Like um you always man, any, anytime. You always solid, man. You always been um helping me out and everything. Uh appreciate you being appreciate you helping me on my journey as a historian and an author as well. Um so you know I'm gonna start working on this next book, so you already know what it is with that. Be hitting you yeah. up and make that happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's more different. Yes, sir. So um yeah. once again. Tell people how to get in contact with you. Um, you can email me at uh, kt. Jewish for the mind. Oh, hold on, kt at Jewish for the mind. Com. Kt okay. at Jewish for the mind. Com. That's my email, and uh, just DM me on my in my uh, Instagram, uh, Jewish for the mind sports media, or either family photo memoirs. Um. I got three other Instagrams, Jewel for the Mind Writer's Life, Jewel for the Mind Journalism, and Jewel for the Mind. But if you forget any of those, just type in Jewel for the Mind on Instagram, and you can DM me on any of them. Because like I say, I have about four or five Instagrams. But if you just type in Jewel for the Mind, you're going to see the different ones. Just DM me on right. any one of those. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And um, just to remind everybody, hey, remember, 
subscribe to this on the shoulders of giants YouTube channel. Yes. Subscribe to it. I got I'm 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 be hitting you in the head with a whole lot of yeah. uh information, historical information, a lot, <clears throat> a lot more of these interviews coming up. Um so Friday, y'all stay tuned because I have the Geechee experience on here. So we're gonna get into the history of the Geechee and how that impacted African and American culture and all those things. Yeah. So make sure you check it out. You can visit my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com. You can get your your copy of my book. If you haven't got a copy of my book, um, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volumes 1, 2, and 3, where I give the stories of sung and unsung heroes of the African diaspora. Um, and you can go ahead and um, go to the website and get those books. My app, I have an app yeah, that's I'll, available. I'll get ready to yeah. say, man. You're yeah. going to leave your app there. Yeah, I got it. my app. Um, so the app for Android right now is available on the website. So you go check that out. Um, we have the Apple app done. We're just working on getting it into the right place so it can be available to everybody. So, but once again, Keith came through and helped me on that uh, with my app for for both for Apple and Android. So make sure y'all um, check out my website and I'll make sure I keep y'all up to date on the app for Apple. But for for all my Android users. Go to my website and go ahead and check out the um the app now. It's a lot of good information on that app. I, I want I want to say one thing now. Go ahead. Y'all got it. I hope everybody check out this brother app because you know in this day and age here we in you know 2020, this brother here is your J A Rogers. He, he you know he's inspired by all of them and the work that they did. That's what inspired him to do what he's doing. So if you really want your children or just yourself to learn African and world history, period. He's putting out videos, audio, all kind of stuff. And, and, and we got the fancy phones, the iPhones and the Android. But if you want your children or just you, if you don't feel like reading, he has the audio for you. The same thing yep. that he will have that you will be reading. You don't feel like reading, you could just hit the play button and listen to the audio. And he's going to take you right. all around the world. So right. uh, you can download that app, like you're saying. It's for the Android and the iPhone. And even right. if you don't feel like reading, get it for your children and watch what happened to their grades. Watch how right. they come from the back of the class. Watch how they become better communicators. Watch how they're going to have intelligent things to say because they're going to be reading. It don't matter if they're reading with their eyes or listening with their ears because everybody don't learn the same way. Uh, some people like to read. Some people like to listen. But at the end of the day, they're going to get this information. So. Yep. Get that, get that for your children. That's gonna be the best gift you can get them. Better than any in a hover hoover board, games they could play. Put that on there and watch what happened to their grades and watch what happened to their knowledge level. Definitely, definitely. Cause yeah. like you, my my grades and my knowledge level definitely increased the more I started reading, the more I started learning. Cause that 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 self-esteem, you start mm -hmm. to feel good about yourself as yeah. a black person, being able to read all the accomplishments of other blacks from from yeah. from from the beginning of time to now. Yeah. And that's why history is important. So, and for those who say they don't like history, all I can say is history is important because it, 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 it lays the groundwork of where we come from to where we are now. And it leaves breadcrumbs to the future. So like yeah. they always say, if you want to know where you're going, you got to understand where you've been and really yeah. understand where you're at. So, and and what, uh, what what's so powerful with so, with the virtual learning going on now, you know, mm -hmm. with, the, with the social distancing and the kids not really able to go to school. This is not boring reading that this brother had these books here and these apps here. So, you know, parents, you can even give them study on um, Arthur Schomburg or study on John Henry Clark or study uh, Ruby D. Or, you could just pick anybody out off of this list. You can let your children or your teens or yourself read, read, read the biography or listen to the biography. And not only that, he got quizzes that they could take the yep. information. They just, so, you know, you can't. It, it's just powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely and, check me out. And he got some and he it just all put together. And like I say, right. to make sure that they, your children not running the game, let them take the quiz, have them go. And go through some of the exercises that he had. I mean, he can has a whole curriculum in there, pretty much. You know, mm -hmm. so you got to check it out on your own. Straight up, and um, check. So if you can support me on Patreon, you can support me for as little as a dollar a month. 
on Patreon, where you'll you have early access to, to videos. You have access to my online course that's on Patreon, and I'll be adding more courses on Patreon. Um, you'll have more access to exclusive content that I got coming up. So patreon.com backslash OTSOG. And just remember, we, we're out here to make sure that we provide information for our people, the African history at your fingertips, the stories of the son and unsung heroes of the African diaspora. So, man, Keith, I appreciate you. Man, I, I appreciate enjoy you. being here. I enjoy being yes, here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, ain't that it ain't that to it about doing it again, man. So okay. um, appreciate you. And we, we, you know, we're going to talk more and we're going to run it back. Okay. All right. All right. We'll see everybody later. Peace.